Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Sunday night service. We come to have a little church tonight. Hallelujah. If you love Jesus, come on, make some noise in the room. Come on. Everybody on your feet. Everybody on your feet. We're going to give God some praise on today. We're going to give God some praise on tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. I said let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Can y'all hear me? I said, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody clap, come on. This is a PCAF classic, come on. Yeah. Yes. Listen, if the Lord has been good to you, say it. Yeah. Yeah. If the Lord has been good to you, say it. Yeah. Oh, if the Lord has been good to you, say it. Yeah. Yeah. If the Lord has been good to you, say it. Yeah. For he saved, saved my soul, and he made, made me whole. If the Lord has been good, everybody say it. Everybody, everybody, come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Oh, if the Lord has been good to you, shout yes. Has been good to you, say yes. Yeah. Oh, if the Lord has been good to you, say yes. Yeah. yeah, if the Lord has been good to you, shout yes. Yeah. So happy Come on, lift up a 
sound of praise. Come on, lift up a sound of praise in the room. If he's been good to you, lift your hands and say yes. Sir. If he's made any way for you, open your mouth and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. good to you say yes wonderful wonderful it's time to pray let us think about all those good things that God has done for us even this week and pass down through this year meditate on him both day and night as we go before him find your space in prayer as we go together eternal God First, we want to say thank you for your love and kindness and your tender mercies. Mm. You're the God that blots out our transgressions. Hey! Shikomo. Ha! Mm. You're the God that makes us whiter than snow. All our errors, mm. all our problems. Mm. You forgive us mercies from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you have done even for Cam this year. We thank you, Lord, for your surrounding love. My God, for a hundred years of celebration. Hey, glory. Mm. Oh, God, we so love you. We appreciate you, Lord, for leadership, for our pastor, Lord, bringing us together as one kingdom apostolic ministries. We thank you for Bishop Lambert W. Gates, Sr., Lord, and the first family, Lord, and the saints of God that followed and came out even this evening, Lord, and this morning, Lord, even from Detroit and around. Oh, God, we say thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We clap our hands in praise. We clap our hands in adulation. For he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord, and we ask now that you would bless this service. Give us what we stand in need of. Give us a word, and we'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor in one name that has power, and one name that has might, and that is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody say it, and everybody say it, amen. Would you read with me as we read the scripture, Psalm 145, verses 1 through 8. And after we have gone through 8, we will come back to number 4 and read it again. I will exalt thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of glorious honor and majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. Oh, come on, sir. They shall abundantly, utterly remember of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great in mercy. All together, number four, one more time. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. How many of you in the room are grateful that you are saved? By a show of hands, if you're grateful that you are saved, I want you to lift up your hands. Open your mouth and say something sweet to our Savior. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. 
we thank you for saving our souls we know that we are rich undone and without you we are nothing we will never reach perfection without you Jesus and so we thank you for saving us hallelujah we thank you for snatching us out hallelujah and bringing us to where you have designed us to be and so we lift our hands in worship on tonight hallelujah hallelujah sing it one more time so it gets in your spirit. to say helper come on and say Come to us. 
talking about come on sing about his name come on yes yes the ones you love the ones you love has come to us the ones you love the ones you love has come to us the man you say has come to honor you. Now this is my favorite part. It says, Keeper, Keeper. He's kept us all year long. We've got to sing about his keeping power. Come on. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us. Yes. The ones you care, the ones you care, has come to honor The ones you love, the ones you love, He loves me, He loves me unconditionally. The one you say, has come to honor you. Last time. The ones you say, the ones you say, has come to our Now, if you're grateful for being saved, come on, lift your hands. Come on, send up a sound of praise in the room. Come on, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hey, we thank you for our salvation. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hiya, yeah, this Sunday night, you got to come with some type of expectation. Come on. To the utmost, Jesus say. To the utmost, Jesus say. He will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah, Jesus saved me. I know y'all know this one. Come on, sing it with me. To the unknown. Yeah, come on. Jesus saved Come on, he saved your soul. To the earth. Jesus saved He will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus saved. And then the next one says, Saved by his power divine. Saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. Come on, you know it. For I'm saved. I'm not saved. Oh yes, I'm saved by His power divine. I'm saved 
to your life sublime. Life now is sweet and the joy is complete for us. Come on, say to new life sublime. Life now is sweet, yeah. and my joy is complete. For I'm saved. Are you saved? Or not? Are you saved? Yeah. Oh, I'm saved. Now, for the next 90 seconds, come on, sing up a song of praise for being saved. That's to be the greatest accomplishment of your life. You say, you say, you say, you've got eternity with God. You've got eternity with Him. Lift up your hand, all ye dead, and be lifted up. The everlasting God, have the key. I said, have the key. Up alone. Now come in. Who is the king? I said, who is? Who is the king? The Lord strong in back. The Lord mighty in back. He is the king. He is the king. I'm talking about Jesus. Shout his name, say Jesus. Break the music real quick. Now, y'all, it's Sunday night, sir. We don't, we don't have these consecutively. So if you're here, that means you came for something. There's some type of expectation on the inside of you that says, I don't know why I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to get too excited. Bear with me. I don't know why I'm here, but I know I need something. I know the psalmist said, something on the inside is working on the up. Oh, what a change. I know I'm young, but my mother is David Sanders, so I know these songs. I said, something on the inside is working. All the outside. All. What it takes. I said all. Oh. Oh, what it takes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just grateful to be saved. I don't, I don't care about nothing y'all talking about. I'm grateful to be saved. I'm grateful that my, I'm grateful that my heart is pure. My eyes made up, and I'm going to see G. They don't want to have no church. They don't want to have no church. They came to spectate. They got everything they want, but I know I'm coming for something. I know I'm talking. I'm coming for something. I know I ain't got everything. I know that my life ain't what I wanted to be, but I'm coming for something. Come on and put those hands together. What did you come to do? We come to put our hands together. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. God has done for me. 
to celebrate Jesus. So we're going to sing a little churchy melody. Is that all right with y'all? Yes. All right. I know y'all not used to hearing me sing churchy songs. I'm usually the cry. But we're going to try it out anyway. Is that all right? All right. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Y'all know this one. I love Jesus. He's my savior when the storms are raging. He's my shelter where he leads me. I will follow. I love Jesus and he loves me. Come on, help me say, I love Jesus. Hey, he's my savior when the storms are raging. He's my shelter where he leads me. Yes, I love Jesus. He loves me. me one more time. I love Jesus. He's my Savior. For the storms are raging. He's my shelter. Where he leads me. Yeah. I love Jesus. And he loves me. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. That wonderful name, Jesus. You are the blessed, blessed that wonderful, wonderful name, name of Jesus. Yeah, blessed that wonderful, wonderful name, of Jesus. For there's no other name, my Lord. You are the blessed that wonderful name, Jesus. Oh, blessed, blessed that wonderful name, Jesus. Yeah, blessed, blessed that wonderful name. Jesus, Jesus, you say no other name under heaven can save us. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. no other name I know. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, no other name under heaven can save us. Oh, oh, Jesus. Everlasting 
everlasting life. An everlasting life. An everlasting life. I'm gonna see my king. I'm gonna see my saint. An everlasting life. An everlasting life. Oh 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 oh. Everlasting life. Oh 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 oh. Everlasting life. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, we're gonna have a little church here. Come on! Oh! 
Come on, somebody clap your hands and just give God praise all over the room tonight. While you're up on your feet, while you're up on your feet, amen, we've been blessed this week with great psalmists, great women of God, and tonight is no different. Amen, I, I want to give them time to get in place tonight. And but let's just give God praise for what we have experienced all weekend long. Come on, somebody clap your hands for Jesus. Give God praise for the praise and worship ministry. Come on, kingdom out. Come on, give God praise for them ushering us. Amen, right into the presence of the Lord. We're so honored, amen, tonight to be here. Amen, we're, we're going to receive uh, tonight. I sort of put them right on the spot. I should have gave them a minute to get in place. But the praise is doing so good, we wanted to get them in. But anybody glad to be saved tonight? Anybody glad to be saved tonight? Anybody glad for the word we received on this morning? Come on. Give God praise for the word. Our spiritual grandfather, God bless him tonight. And we salute our bishop and our pastor. We're getting ready now to be, uh, be, 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 almost said be favored, but I don't want you to take it in a negative way. Uh, Sister Pam is not a performer. She's a praiser. Tell somebody she's not a performer. Tell somebody she's a praiser. I want you to receive. Would you one more time clap your hands, everybody. And let's receive Sister Pam Westbrook. Here at Kingdom Apostolic Ministries. Come on, you can do God better than that. Let's receive them. Come on, say, Sister Pam. Tell her to take us further in Jesus' name. God bless you. Somebody give the Lord praise. Oh, y'all sitting down on Jesus. I said the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If your God is not dead, I dare you show some sign in the house. I said if your God is not dead. I dare you show some sign, yeah. Okay, let me go. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so in the house. Father, we thank you because this is the day that you have made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad. Is anybody glad to be saved? Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Just for the next 15 seconds, I know y'all want a song. But I dare you make up your own song in the Holy Ghost. Somebody just for the next 15 seconds, just begin to open up your mouth and give a glory. You're worthy, you're worthy. You are the King of kings, yes, Lord. You're the Lord of lords. You're the everlasting God. You're the heavyweight champion of the world. You stand on the feet of Jesus. Somebody turn, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. The Holy Ghost looks good on you. Yeah, yes, it does. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your loving kindness. It's better than life itself, oh God. And we come to give your name all the glory. Hallelujah. We honor this great house. Happy anniversary, y'all. Y'all must be tired. People closed down two years ago. The church didn't sustain. They didn't believe God. But look at you in this beautiful edifice, still giving God the praise. Woo, my God, I thank you. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Y'all, thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise that shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Come on, say it I will bless, I will bless the Lord at all times Come on, say it And His praise Let's 
let's do it together. Let's do it together. I didn't come here to worship by myself. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me, Jesus. Oh, you've been better than good to me. It's okay if you put your hands on it. Come on. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Yes, Lord. Hey, you've been better than good to me. Can I testify right here? I should have been there. You've been better than good to me. So you've been better than good to me. I woke up this morning with no mercy. You've been better. You've been better than good to me. And your grace is sufficient for me. You've been better than good to me. Let me testify. I should have been there. I should have been there. Hey, but you've been better than good. Can I get a one on witness? Can I get a one witness? Should have lost. Oh! 
Call on that 
Oh, come on, come on. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. I'll give him some praise. Oh, he's worthy. Now that praise that praised God out of her heart. And what you gonna do? Put your hands together and give God some praise. He's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. We have some presentations to give to this great man of God. And 34 years ago, he came to the city of Indianapolis. And when he came, Indianapolis was asleep. But we have woke up in the wrong way. Hey! We woke up in the wrong way. You used to come to Indianapolis and it was a little easy. But now you come to Indianapolis, they're killing somebody every night. But there's still a man of God that's preaching the gospel that won't take his eyes off of Jesus Christ. He's still infected by the blood of the cross. And we're talking about none other than Bishop Lambert, W. Gates Sr. Thirty-four years ago, he walked into what we called Mount Zion back then, and he let them know up front that if you want a hireling, I'm not the one. But if you want a pastor, I'm your man. And he came in, and he gave of himself. And he didn't come taking, he came giving. And I want to let you know six things about a senior pastor. They listen to God. They shape the culture. They communicate biblical truth. They cast clear vision. They develop leaders. And they connect with the community. And certainly, Bishop Lambert W. Gates Sr. has done all six of these. I'd like for the pastoral team to stand that are part of Cam's pastoral team. If you would stand right now, please. We're here to present Bishop Gates with a gift from all of us. And in a few seconds, I say a few seconds because I know what the three B's are and I'm going to do it. In a few seconds, Pastor White's going to come and explain the gift that we're giving to our pastor. Bishop, you have put up with me for 34 years. You have given me the title of mother. But tonight, I want to declare, look at my hair and look at yours. <laughs> At this time, I give you Pastor White. Uh, where I'm from, that's called shots fired. Shots fired, and I know Bishop Gates is gonna come back. Oh, oh, Pastor Stone, we love you. It's been nice knowing you. <laughs> uh, but we certainly bless God for our senior pastor, Bishop Lambert W. Gates Sr. Um, he is the type of pastor that we can have that sort of relationship. Um, he's not stuffy and far removed, um, and he has a way of making a relationship with each person that can make you feel like you are the only one or you are, you know, the most special one to him. And so tonight, the uh, uh, pastoral team want to present a gift to you, Bishop Gates, and they say, uh, you know, big things come in small packages. And so uh, we know that you are a collector and you are a lover of... Um, understated luxury items, right? Right. I mean, you can eat fried chicken, but you also enjoy a steak at Ruth's Chris, right? Um, and so we wanted to get you something to add to a collection that we know that you already have. Um, and so tonight, it's my pleasure on behalf of the pastoral team, and I think they, hopefully they can show a picture of it. If not, it's okay. Uh, we want to add to your collection of Mont Blanc writing instruments. I will not call it a pen because you dare not call a Mont Blanc a, a pen. Um, but the one that we selected is called Meister. It's from the Meisterstruck line. 
Um, Meisterstruck was actually started, started in 1924, so it's appropriate. It's just about 100 years old as we are celebrating 100 years here at, um, in CAM. But Meisterstruck is German for the word masterpiece. And what better gift to give to one of God's masterpieces? We believe the choice masterpiece when it comes to senior pastors than a masterpiece. We love you. All of the pastors love you, and we salute you, Bishop. Praise the Lord, Cam. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I, I don't have a history for our gift, Bishop. They kind of, you know, made me feel some type of way, but we still have a gift anyway. Um, we love our pastor, don't we? Come on, celebrate our pastor. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Celebrate our pastor. Oh, come on and celebrate our pastor, our leader, the presider of the PC of AF. Come on and celebrate Bishop Lambert Wade Gates Sr. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's my pastor. That's my pastor. Um, I would agree with Sister White that um, Bishop does make everybody feel like they are that one. But just so y'all know, I am that one. I am. I'm the favorite. I'm his daughter. I don't know who thought they were the favorite, but I'm I'm sorry. It's all right. You're just second in line behind me. <laughs> hey, man, that's a little joke. But um, I am Bishop's favorite. He didn't never tell me that, but I know he wanted to deep down somewhere inside. <laughs> Amen. But um, I'm here on behalf of the pastor's partners to present our gift to Bishop. Um, Bishop is one of the hardest people to get a gift for um, because, and not because he has a lot of things, which he probably does, you know, not because he's super, um, you know, uh, he's, he, he wants certain things or he asks for a lot. Not because any of those reasons, even though, you know, they may be true. I don't know, Bishop, are they true? Do you ask for a lot? Do you? You want some, sometimes, okay. Um, but just because, you know, we try to be thoughtful of the gifts that we give him. We always sneak around and we always asking everybody, have y'all heard what he wants? Have y'all heard anything that he's asking for, anything that he needs? And, you know, we try to sneak into um, Trustee Jones, do you know what he wants? Uh, Trustee Jennings, do you know what he wants? And so um, this year we decided to do, um, give the bishop this gift so that he would have one in Detroit and Indianapolis. Bishop has recently taken up an activity of golfing and um, I'm so excited for him that he's doing that. That is, that is relaxing for him. That is time away. And so we wanted to get him some golf clubs so that he would have some here in Indianapolis as well as in Detroit so that he can get his golfing game up and compete with Tiger Woods. And so we are so excited. Bishop, we love you so much. Thank you for all that you do for us as a congregation, as a body of believers, as a body of people, not just in Cam, but all across the world. Thank you for imp imparting into us, pouring into us, loving us, putting up with us. And thank you for making me your favorite. We love you. We love you so much, Bishop. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I was just thinking from and, and to Bishop Nelson, to our bishop's pastoral staff, Bishop Gates. I was just thinking this morning when Bishop Nelson was uh, giving his message this morning, it took me way back to 1999. I was one of those folk that uh, didn't quite have it all together. I know you all do. But in 1999, on a Palm Sunday, I came and gave my life to Christ. And the man that took me before service and baptized me was Bishop Lambert Wade Gates, Jr., Sr. The, now, what's ironic is, this was, again, this was 1999. At that time, Bishop Gates and I were the same age. We were the same age 23 years ago. So it's amazing. Right now, I'm 63. You still got one more day of being 63. But for some reason, he still says that he is how old? 
39. <laughs> One of God's miracles, amen. If we could just have the uh, official board please stand. Official board. This is from Cam Indianapolis, Cam Detroit, and Cam E Church. We have a brand new, new deacon on our board, amen. Bitch, not Bishop, but Lambert Wade Gates Jr. is our newest deacon, amen. And I believe we have a presentation. Can we present what's coming from the official board trustees of all of our official boards? And thank you for the many years of service and the great leadership you've provided this ministry through the years. And I'll follow that by saying it is also very miraculous to have a pastor who has been 39 for all these years. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bishop Gates. Amen. Amen. Do we have the gifts that we have for Bishop on the video, please? We don't have them. Okay, uh, Bert Lambert Jr., you'll have to present your gifts to Bishop. There we go. All right. A special gift for Bishop Gates. Birthday and pastoral anniversary celebration. Detroit Tigers. We know that Bishop is a, he loves baseball. And we know that he's from Detroit, and this is one of the gifts that the official board wanted to give to you on your th th 39th birthday. Amen. And for the second gift. get the second gift all right if not uh, Lambert Jr. you'll have to pull the second gift out of that blue bag please <laughs> 39 y'all to God be the glory. Amen. We love you. Yes, sir. Lord, Kingdom Apostolic Ministries, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Truly, it's an honor and a privilege um, to be here celebrating 100 years with Kingdom Apostolic Ministries. Let's give God a praise for 100 years. It's also an honor and a privilege to be here um, in town this weekend celebrating 64 years of life with my father. Um, I have the most amazing dad. Last night, some of the brothers, some of the deacons, we got together um, for food and fellowship. And one of the biggest things that stood out to me was more people look to my father as a father. And there's something to be said with men and women in their adult years who you've not fathered biologically look to you as a father. I have the most amazing dad. He's so amazing that everybody else wants him to be their father. And I'm so happy to be able to share him with the world. I'm honored to be your son. I love you. I appreciate every sacrifice you made. You're the best. Happy birthday.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to worship again. We're going to worship again, and we're going to lift up a sound of worship in the room. And we're going to talk to God about how much he deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. He deserves our hallelujah. And so wherever you are, I just wanted you to lift your hands and send up a sweet fragrance to him. Send up a sound to him. Come on. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We honor you today. We worship you for being God. We worship you for being king. And we worship you for being our ruler. And so we honor you today, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs. Come on and me say yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hey, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, say my hallelujah. Build it up. Here we go. You all know the song, so join in with me. You deserve it. You deserve it. So you deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. So you deserve it. You deserve all of Jesus. You deserve the glory, Lord. Yeah. Say all of the glory. Sing all of the glory. something for the next 60 seconds. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for being our Lord and our King, Lord. We thank you for being the ruler. We thank you for being the author of our faith, Lord. And so we lift our hands in the sanctuary and we offer you, we offer you a sacrifice of praise. We lift our hands and we honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you for your goodness. We honor you for your mercy. We honor you for your grace. We honor you for your grace. We honor you for your grace. You yeah. say hallelujah. 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 Sing hallelujah. Sing all the glory. All the honor. Give all the praise. You deserve it. You're worthy of the honor, Lord. You're 
you're worthy of my worship, Lord. Yeah. Say hallelujah. 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 All praise be to God. All glory be to God. All thanks be to God. All honor be to God. We say hallelujah. 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 Sing hallelujah. Sing all the glory. All the honor. All the praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Has the Lord been good to anyone in this room? Has the Lord opened any doors for you? He's so worthy and so honorable. And before we move on, I want us to saturate this place with the sound of worship. I, re I really want us to set the atmosphere. We can't bring a speaker and a preacher up here and it not be conducive for the presence of God and the word that is getting ready to go forth. And so for the next 60 seconds, I want you in your own way, however you talk to them, I just want you to just lift your hands. If you want to sit, you can sit. If you need to bow, you can bow. But we're going to make this room conducive for the presence of God because honestly he's welcoming us we're not welcoming him we're coming into his presence we're coming into his presence this is his house how dare we step into his presence and not say thank you so for the next 60 seconds just lift up your hands come on Lacey lift up your hands and say something to him hallelujah you're worthy Jesus you're worthy Lord Oh, yeah, na ma shera, yeah, na 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 ma ho, yeah, 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 oh yeah, oh yes, oh. Daily I will. This is our pastor's song. Worship thee, come on, Lamb of God, who, if you know it, come on, sing it with me. Die for who. <laughs> in death endless mercy <laughs> endless mercy daily word I'm a whole shy daily I come on church sing it up worship Lamb of God who Die for you. Oh, who extended high devil whole shot in this I know we gotta move on. I know we gotta move on. But daily I will work. And if Bishop was up here, he'll probably say, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Thou art the potter, and I am, wow, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, wow, after thy will, while I One more time, church, lift up the sound. No music. Come on. Have thine own. Oh, ha, ha. oh shy. Have thine. Hold up my high. Thou art the. And I am. How am I? Oh, shy. Oh, mold me. <laughs> Make me into who you want me to become, God. After that, come on, now, come on. Why? One more time. Why? 
I'm going to sit right here and wait until you voila. Well, let's say that again. Everybody, have thy own way. You can't sing that without your hands lifted up. Have thy own way. Thou art the potter. Thou art the potter. And I am the clay, Lord. And I am the clay. Mold me and make me. Hallelujah. After thy will. After thy will. Hallelujah. While I'm waiting. While I am waiting. Yield it. Somebody praise him right now. Oh, you that really want God to make you. Glory. Come on and praise him. And how many know God got to do it? Look at somebody and tell them God got to do it. And tell him I'm waiting on him to do it. Tell somebody else that before you sit down. Tell him God got to do it. And I'm just waiting on him to do it. You may be seated up in the presence of the Lord. Make me think of that old song. I want to live so God can use me. Come on. Anywhere. Anytime. I wish I had some praises. I want to live so God can use me. Anywhere. Clap your hands and say, I want to live so God can use me. Come on, Father. Oh, yeah. Clap your hands. I want to live so anywhere. And I want to walk so anywhere. I want to walk so anywhere. Oh, I want to talk so anywhere, anytime. I want to talk so. Let me see how many know how to clap, baby.
bless his name. Glory be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord and let's just praise God for his presence. How about that? Come on, give God a big hand clap. Big hand clap. He deserves it. We are so blessed tonight. We're grateful for this 100 year celebration. And it has been a blessed weekend, has it not? Lord has been here since Friday. Powerful service Friday night. Wonderful day of fellowship all day yesterday. We just came and enjoyed one another. You know, it's nice to know that you can be saved and have fun. Amen. This is not drudgery. Sometimes people feel sorry for those of us that are saved, but I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me. Amen. The old saints used to say, I'm on my way to heaven and I'm enjoying the trip. And so we bless God tonight. We're happy for all of you who are here tonight. Uh, I'm still feasting off of that powerful message. Got to go down in the Hall of Fame. Let's praise God for our bishop, our pastor, my pastor, our apostolic father. Let's thank God for the Honorable Bishop James David Nelson Sr. What a word. What a word this morning. He still serves in the office of presiding bishop of the World Assemblies of Restoration. And uh, when he was ministering this morning, I ran over and told one of the young men, everybody don't know, I said, that man is 88 years old. And uh, he didn't just give us a father talk this morning. He chopped wood this morning. Amen. And preached this place into a frenzy. And we're so grateful uh, that he shared with us and blessed us today. I left it to him to honor uh, his dear wife and my mom, but tonight I want to salute, amen, overseer mother, Bessie Nelson. Let's praise God for her. Just a beautiful gem of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we feel we're just blessed that you would grace us, amen, with your presence uh, on today. Uh, we went to a nice place for dinner, but she didn't go with us. I'm going to tell y'all something about it. I don't know exactly what she did. We were headed uh, to Ruth Chris. You know, we're going to treat them real nice. But um, when she comes to Indianapolis and Detroit, I'm going to tell on her. Most Sunday afternoons, she wants to be taken to White Castle. <laughs> they don't have them out east. And so she says when, when she's in the area, she don't need all of that stuff. Amen. I wish some of these other preachers would let us take them to White Castle. Amen. We, we, we save a whole lot of money. <laughs> At least all these preachers would like White Castle. But we're so grateful and thankful for them tonight. And I've just been, today, this weekend has been a weekend of surprises for me. Let me just pause though real quick. And I want to thank uh, everyone. This might be a good juncture to do that. To thank everyone who has uh, worked we can't call every name, but write a, a, a little uh, tribute, I'm sure, by next week. The publications team will come together and put something that would be expressive of my sentiment of gratitude to everyone who has served. I don't want to call every auxiliary, every ministry. We did have an anniversary team. I don't want to even call all those names. I will call the, the inner campus leader for that, if you'll allow me. And uh, those who are present tonight that worked along with her from whatever campus, just want you to stand. Is that all right? Because if I forget a name, then somebody's going to be mad with me by tonight. And I'll be getting messages and all these kind of things. And, and I don't feel like that because I got joy right now. And I want to stay happy. So I'm just going to call her name. And those that work with her, if you would stand. I don't even know if she's in here. She may be doing something now. But I think Sister Tiffany Beeler has a bit, no Lord, Sister Tiffany Porter has been a superb leader. And I, is she in the room? Where's she at? Is she here tonight? Where's she at? There, come on out, come on out. 
Come on, I know you don't, I know you don't want to. At least step to the edge. There she is. Give God a praise for her. What a wonderful job. She spearheaded it all. Anybody who worked with her, would you stand if you're in the room? Her husband certainly did. We got to give him a shout out. Elder Andrew Porter and all these others that every one of them, you know I see you. Uh, forgive me. Just allow me not to call names and stay true to what I said. But I want you to know I appreciate you. Each of you and whatever you have done to make the 100 year celebration wonderful. It was superb in Detroit and superb here in Indianapolis. And uh, we have had some church this weekend. Oh my God. And we're thankful to the Lord for that. I appreciate the tributes. This year has been a little unusual. Project 100 just sort of collected. It was a, an amalgamation of everything. My pastoral appreciation was. Uh, also in the midst of that gift we've tried to make it easy this year capital improvements all of those things sort of just wrapped up together and so thank you for your support we know some of you are going to finish up on that some of you call it up today but thank you in advance for that and whatever you do tonight uh, one when the offering and tithe and offerings I receive we bless God for you but I want to say to Cam thank you for your support all year long and even for the uh, love that has been shown me, appreciation that has been shown me uh, as we celebrate 34 years now of pastoring. And uh, also as I celebrate, I don't know what Deacon McPherson was up here talking about, 64. He's 64. That's my friend and brother, but uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna hold on to 39 just one more year. Amen. And then we'll see what the Lord says after that. Next year we'll see if I'll change just a bit after that. But now that I've said that, it's just been a weekend of fun, surprises, people showing up. Uh, many I have in respect. My sister mom is still with us. My sister mom is still with us. Amen. And uh, my, my daughter in love. I just see just my daughter. You know, we got to fix everything up. She's just my daughter, but she's here. And my granddaughter is here. Wish my other one was here, but my youngest granddaughter is here tonight. And uh, my sons, uh, uh, Lambert, he, that boy, he talked tonight, didn't he? Made his father feel good. So I thank God for him. And uh, But I've been, just a lot of surprises. Some showed up, I wasn't looking for it tonight. What a beautiful surprise. Uh, a longtime friend and brother uh, showed up. We go way back in the day. Oh, I meant to tell Pastor Stone. The devil almost made me forget. But, but there are two things I'm going to say to you tonight. Don't, don't, don't get in trouble. Payback is a monster. And then I'm going to quote a scripture to you in the hour that you think not. <laughs> all right, so, so y'all understand when it happened, y'all just understand. She got hers. That was a good one. She got hers in tonight. So I'm going to let her have tonight. <laughs> but my friend and brother, we go way back in the day when both of our heads was black. Amen. And uh, he just eased down the highway. He passed his age mammoth of a church in Cincinnati, Ohio. Beautiful church, beautiful congregation. Uh, he's our general secretary, member of our executive bishop's cabinet of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith International. And uh, uh, we were little preachers, well, before we were little preachers, little brothers standing out on the sidewalk. And here we are now running this organization together. And uh, he has been who he is down through the years. He didn't have to come tonight, but he came. And uh, I love him for that. I wouldn't dare have him here and not uh, for him not to have words. But before he comes, uh, there's another young man here tonight who I have just claimed as my son. I pulled him a little closer. He and his dad and Bishop Chapman and I were just three uh, compadres running together 
Lord called his father home, late Bishop Dr. Michael E. Ford Sr. And I can never be that dad, but I still adopt him as my son because I feel that's what his father would want me to do. And uh, he and I have the best of relationships and he surprised me tonight. His wife is my daughter and they surprised me tonight. And he's got a, a thriving work in Louisville, Kentucky. He's just, his dad, magnificent job, but he's just taking it to another level. And he took time out of all his busy schedule to come and be with me tonight. And I appreciate that so. And so he's gonna come first to have uh, remarks of Bishop Michael Lee Ford Jr. And then uh, the Honorable Bishop James E. Chapman, in that order. God bless them. Would y'all love on them? Come on, love on both of them. Love on both of them. Praise the Lord, everybody. Y'all done got fancy up in this church. I got the big giant screen now, and it's been fooling me for the past two months. Uh, I thought that was the actual same thing there. So I was like, where they say the screen's at? But y'all done got real good and fancy, and we just thank the Lord for being in the house of the Lord and thank God for our presiding bishop. And um, I just wanted to just say how, can y'all hear me? Oh, the mic is on. I hear myself. Yeah. Y'all know that ain't my fault. They do this to me at the convention too. Y'all know that? Hello. Uh, can you hear me now? Hello? Y'all can hear me? Burley? Okay. They said Burley? They said Burley. So let's, let's try it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We just, I just, I just want to thank the Lord for allowing us to be here. Uh, I just wanted to say it's good to celebrate our, our bishop. It's good to celebrate our bishop. Um, you know, I found out um, a lot of people, you, you fail to really love on people until they're gone. And, um, you know, it's funny, all the people, when Bishop, when, when Dad died, people came out of the woodworks, uh, they was crying, and, oh, we miss them, and we loved them so much. But I remember his last pastor's anniversary, wasn't hollering nobody there. And then all the people showed up after he was gone. And you know, sometimes I wonder if people ain't crying because of guilt, may regret. And uh, so I, I, you know, it's, it's, the scripture says uh, uh, something like this. He says, uh, you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, but you don't have very many fathers. And I think it's good to celebrate because those instructors always tell you stuff to do, but they don't do it themselves. The instructors are real good at saying give, tithe, love, but they're not good at it themselves. They tell you to follow leadership, and they don't do it themselves. And, and so I'm glad that we have a father in uh, Bishop Gates who leads by example. And uh, I personally have been following him uh, for the past, I guess, eight years we've been working with him, and I've just been gleaning from everything he do, the way he love on people. How many of y'all he done loved on before? Like, I think the one girl said, she said she feels like it's personal, like he, like she's the favorite. And I was confused because I was thinking, wait a minute, that's my spot. I'm the favorite. How she get to, she must have been talking about at Cam. She's the favorite at Cam. And, uh, but but we just thank the Lord. I, I want to say we don't have many fathers, and, and I did lose, I lost a great father. And, uh, but I'm so glad that God put another father in my life. And I just wanted to tell Bishop, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, Christ Temple uh, Christian Life Center in Louisville, Kentucky, we love you. My wife, Andrea, uh, sometimes I get just a little bit jealous, Bishop, because she, she hop on your prayer.
you hop some. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, check, check. Was that a sign that my time was up? Hallelujah. That, all of them going. Uh, I all think that's them. normally at the at the. Great And rebuke the system. Isn't technology wonderful? It works all the time until you need it. Is it back on now? Well, glory to God. Whoa. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord one more time. So happy to be here and to have this great opportunity to share with you from time, space, and dimension. One of the greatest celebrations on this side of heaven. You know, it's amazing about Bishop Gates, you know, in the forest, the biggest bear puts a mark on the tree. I came in and looked at that screen. I said, man, he went to the top of the tree. You are blessed. He's a visionary. He's a lover of people. But most of all, he's my friend. And I know people say, well, I get tired of you saying that, Chapman. But he played Cupid for me and my wife. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm still in love. And I'm so thankful for your intervention. Let me say this. We live in a time and a space and an era when everybody don't love Jesus. I'm so glad to follow a man that loves Jesus, that lets it be seen in his life both in person and in the open. I celebrate this great church Cam and to all of you tremendous workers and I echo what suffering Bishop Ford said you can't love a man of God too much y'all missed that let me help you out hold your hands up everybody hold your hands up according to the scripture as long as Moses hands was up the people were blessed come on somebody so if we hold him up the blessings got to come down I'm trying to help y'all be blessed so thank God then like to this, finally, this is the 100th year. I believe that's 10 to the first power. For those of you a little slow in math, that's 100. So for every decade in 100, the great tri-state conference is going to give Bishop $100, which comes to a grand total of $1,000. You ought to thank God for the impact this man has had on us. I love you, Bishop. I honor you, Bishop. And I will say this and sit down. I was laughing when she talked about your hair. But then I remembered I looked in the mirror. I'll say no more. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if this is anniversary time, and so we do, we're asking just for a little indulgence for you. I told you Friday night, 
we're kind of doing this the old way. You know, in the new wave, nobody talks. We have everybody stand, give a wave offering. But I just felt, you know, 100 years, uh, there are a few things I want to do the old-fashioned way. And uh, part of that is letting the preachers talk. And so there's one more tonight that I want to speak to us. He took time out. He came, drove all the way up from Terre Haute, Indiana. He's our council uh, chairman, chairman of the Indiana State Conference. And I want Suffolk and Bishop Purnell, if he will, to come down and just say a few words to us. His lovely wife is back there. God bless her. And um, would y'all love on him as he takes his time? Coming down. Come on, love on him. We appreciate him being here tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, everybody. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Amen. I certainly won't belabor the time. I thank you, Bishop, for allowing me a few words to say. I feel that I wanted to be here tonight. Necessarily wanted to be able to say amen to the truth when it's preached. But also, um, your pastor... Uh, my bishop, my presider, has been a, just such an integral part of the formation of my ministry. As some of you know that he was instrumental in my installation. Not only did he officiate it, but he prompted my father to do it before he passed. And I kind of consider it a blessing because my father, the late great Bishop Jesse Purnell, installed him when in turn he installed me amen amen i i certainly will hold that near and dear to my heart as long as i live and as i thought driving over the highway i simply wanted to say thank you bishop thank you mount zion for being there so many leaders are gone you're still here so many leaders say they're going to show up and don't show up. You showed up. He shows up all over the country. One week I was traveling in Birmingham on the radio. Bishop Gates is coming to town. <laughs> Thank you for being there. It's a lot of sacrifice. A lot of pressure is on him. I believe the Lord has supported him because of his heart toward God. I believe I can say that, and I'm so not so much in a position uh, uh, over him at all. I'm not trying to be out of order. But I see the Lord supporting him, which is important. Don't you realize you can pack it out with 5,000 and the Lord don't support him? Amen, somebody. But when you come in here, I'm sure you feel the anointing. When you come in here, it feels like you've been to church. When you come in here and shout hallelujah, there's a thunderous roar in the atmosphere. I feel that God has anointed him to put people in contact with God. God bless you. We come from Bethlehem Temple in Terre Haute, Indiana, where Bethlehem Temple loves Bishop Gates, Mount Zion. We've had fellowship all over the years, and now Kingdom Apostolic Ministry will continue that. So on behalf of me and my lovely wife, Minister Lady Lauren, we just showed up to say thank you for being there. God bless you. Well, I am appreciative of Suffolk and Bishop Purnell because he had the oil on him that brought the sound back on. So thank you. We appreciate you. The Lord is good, is he not? Amen. Now, we're going to move on with our service, and uh, we have tried to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and we've had a great time. We have sang, we have shouted, and we're in the culminating uh, service of this culminating 100, uh, of the culminations that I say of our 100-year celebration. 
I am grateful tonight for the man of God who is going to come and bless this house. He, some of his members, amen, are even in the house, amen, from, I think, from Charlotte, anybody from Jacksonville or Houston? Jacksonville and Houston don't love me, but Charlotte, no, I know better, but Charlotte is in the house. I'll let him call on you uh, to stand when you come and Vasna is here. Give me that good coffee. Amen. On Monday, she's here tonight. God bless her. But we're grateful for this young man. He um, is a true son in the gospel. And uh, Lord allowed our lives to cross uh, the pathways of one another. And I'm grateful for it. I believe he's grateful as well. And uh, he stays connected all the time. We talk all the time very interesting young man god has blessed him in the past really uh, kcc kingdom city church expands three cities houston jacksonville and charlotte and he's doing a great work in each of those cities the ministry has been in demand ever since he was i think a teenager he's been on the circuit going around to very major, large ministries, and God has used him. He has a very unique gifting, and he's anointed and, and unctionized by the Lord. And certainly to me, in every regard, he has proven himself to be a son. And so I couldn't think of anyone else uh, to close out this celebration. Matter of fact, I was very specific about who I had in Detroit, who I had in Indianapolis, I had a lot of people in my ear telling me who to invite and, and uh, what mega name preacher to have. But I didn't want to have folk that didn't know anything about us. And I didn't just want to have somebody in to draw a crowd that did not have an intimate connection with us. And the uh, longer you live, you know, let me just say this, because it's the last time I'm going to speak. The longer you live, the more you appreciate true connection and relationship. I'm done with chasing star preachers. Diva singers. All I care about now is a relationship with God. And whoever is in my life, I want to have an authentic relationship with. Who agrees with me that the... the <laughs> I didn't know I was going to say this, but I just want to ask you one more question. Who agrees with me? Because this is where I am. If I sound redundant, so be it. I just don't care anymore. How many believe it's time for the church to get out of show business and get into God's business? You shouldn't come to church because of a preacher. You should come to church because of Jesus. And so without any further to do, He's not here tonight because he has a name. He's here tonight because he's my son. And I want you to just stand, receive this anointed vessel of the Lord, the services in his hands. However he flows, flow with him. I know we had a psalmist on programs. They did a magnificent job. Let's praise God for them. But, uh, you were wonderful. We appreciate you. And you'll be back. But he don't need no psalmist. He's his own psalmist. Come on here and preach. Let's receive Prophet Brad Khan. Come on. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep. Come on, sing it with me. i
make parts. Come on. Guardian. 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 Hey. Somebody say yes, Lord. Oh, clap. Come 
know I'm looking for somebody to give him a yes in here. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Yeah. Somebody say yes, Lord. 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 At your belly. At your spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Clap your hands and tell them yes. Hey! Hey! Come on here. Where your praise at? You look like you left it in your car. Go get your praise. Bring it in the sanctuary. And take 10 seconds and tell God how awesome he is. Oh yes. Hey! From the bottom of my heart. From the bottom of my heart. Somebody say yes, Lord. Y'all go sit down. He's what? about it now you'll talk about it later Hey. 
I am so grateful. Hallelujah. is in the room. I said breakthrough is in the room. Look at somebody say get it, 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 get it. Hey! Clap those hands for Jesus. to minister to so great a people. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. And um, the Bible says that a friend loveth at all times. Then it says a brother is born for adversity. The scripture said he that have friends must show himself. In its, in its purest form in the Hebrew, it, it really means that a person who is very friendly at the end of their life, stay with me, person who is very friendly gives of themselves usually never find in return what they give you give of yourself all the time and usually when you give of yourself all the time you don't receive that back but then the next part says but there is a friend that sick of closer than a brother. Not a mama, not a daddy, but a brother. Because the relationship between siblings is stronger than the relationship between a son and his mother or a son and his father. Because two children will talk about mama while she walking out the room. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
going out the door, say, you know mama crazy. <laughs> but people are not consistent. People change. And I reached out to Bishop Gates. In one of the primes of my ministry, I was traveling everywhere. And, um, thousands of people showing up. And he came. He didn't know me. But he came. And I asked him to be my pastor. And from then, and I'm not, a, I'm not an easy child. I mean, I'm a good child. No, really, really. I do what I'm told, but you know, I go through stuff. Like kids do, say amen. <laughs> and he has remained consistent. He's never changed. He's been faithful, committed. Um, and he's going to do what he wants to do. Nobody tells him who to love. Nobody tells him who to like. And if he's on your phone, if he's on your side, he will fight for you. He don't fight like you want him to fight. Because I be wanting him to, you know, like, fight. But he has his way of fighting. May not do what you want him to do, but you know he got your back. And I beseech you by the mercies of God, if you would help me honor my pastor, your pastor, our leader, a great man of God, doesn't change and is consistent with my love and revere with everything that's in me. I believe that your leader is not worthy of honor. But the Bible says they're worthy of double honor. That means however you treat a judge, your mama, your path, whoever, whatever, your leader gets double that honor. I would ask of you to please clap, scream, holler for the one and only Bishop Lambert. Yes. God for our pastor's pastor. Come on. I asked Bishop one time, I say, who can get on you, Bishop? He said, Bishop Nelson. I said, what you mean get on you? He said, you like, he really get on you? He said, oh yeah, Bishop Nelson will tell me to stop talking in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> Can we give Bishop Ford a great big God bless you and all of the pastors. We're grateful to be here. Can we go straight to the word of God and go to 2 Kings? Is that possible? Second yes, Kings chapter six. Thank you, Lord. So love Jesus. Can we stand for the reading of the word? My soul loves Jesus. My soul. Hello, Shai. 
loves Jesus. Kilala ko bibiyasha. Bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My soul, oh yes, loves Jesus. My soul. Bishop Gates on us. Can we read the B clause? Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I think if I was to take a title for this, I, I would that you would look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, neighbor. you're too big for this. Too big for this. Yeah. Too big for this. Maybe you should find you another neighbor that has a little preach in their voice. Look at them with a little confidence and say, I have a word for you. You're too big for this. And do me a favor and look at somebody way across the room. Try to make eye contact with somebody. If you can, find somebody. Look at them and say, I'm trying to tell you this. It's time to go to another level. If you receive that, let me hear a shout like you received it. We are coming, Brother Powell, to the close of a year. And for sure, I believe I heard the Lord tell me at the beginning of 2022 when I was seeking his direction to ask him what the year 2000. 22 was I ministered to the people to whom I pastor and said to them that 2022 is the year of the crossroad that it was the year that you could not be lazy or laxed or 
play around with your life. But it was a pivotal year in your life that you were at a crossroad and you needed to make some major decisions. And whatever decision you made, you needed to stick to it. Because I believe the Lord said to me that if we didn't make the right decisions this year, we would find ourselves back in the same cycles. I've committed myself. I, I said at the beginning of the year that I was going to have a six pack <laughs> in the summertime and I don't have a six pack, I have a keg. I don't. I've, I've not done it yet because I like to eat. I don't just like to eat, but I like soul food. Baked chicken, fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, string beans, yams. I'm going to go a little southern on you. Pig feet. <laughs> Chitlins and hog mogs. <laughs> See, I just lost some of y'all. I lost some. I like oxtails. I like ham hocks, neck bones, lima beans. I like that. I don't just like soul food, I like desserts. Pound cake, banana pudding, sweet potato pie, peach cobbler. I like that. I'm not shame about it. I love the smell of bacon in the morning. And I'm not talking about no turkey bacon. Nobody want no turkey bacon. I want the pig. From the Rudy to the Tootie. People who tell you that turkey bacon tastes like regular bacon, you lying. That turkey bacon tastes like a cardboard box. So because I like to eat, I messed up and opened the kitchen in Charlotte. And all the food I like, they cook. I like fried fish too, by the way, good. But you know, we eat fried fish on white bread. I noticed people up in the South, I mean up, People be eating fried fish with spaghetti. Well, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't do that. Fish go with grits. Yes, fish and grits. And I'm really finna make you mad. You're not supposed to put sugar in grits. Grits is supposed to have salt and pepper and butter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's right. Can my salt and pepper people with butter grits say praise the Lord? Where the sugar people at? Ain't none of y'all saved.
But it's true, I enjoy eating food. But I committed to getting in shape this year, so I noticed that November and December is here, and I need to hurry up and commit. So I've been working out twice a day, but I learned that abs are not made in the gym, they're made in the kitchen, which means I got to change the way I eat. And the devil is a liar. But I'm making it my business to go ahead and commit to it and do it because I understand that this year is the year of the crossroad. I'm trying to tell you that I'm making it my business to keep my commitments, to honor my word, not just to others, but most of us don't even keep our word to ourselves. We make promises to ourselves and we've gotten so used to lying to ourselves that we don't even hold ourselves accountable. I read the scripture that declares that one of the signs of the end time is that people would be truce breakers, unable to be committed, unable to even keep a covenant. That's the time we're living in now. Not too many people are committed to anything. We change churches like we change clothes. We have been saved for two years. And in the two years you've been saved, you've had seven pastors. And you have all these pastors because you say that can't nobody handle your anointing. And people don't understand the grace of God that's on my life, and you really don't have one. But we lack commitment. Somebody shout, commitment. There's no commitment, even in friendships. There's no commitment. You can't really find people who keep their word. You can't find people who will keep their word even to their detriment. I think you have to understand that if you've declared that someone is your friend, they are even your friend when you fall out. And just because you fall out, you don't use that as an opportunity to expose everything they told you in the friendship. If I'm your friend, I'm your friend. My daddy always said to me like this, he said, teeth and tongue fall out all the time. And the point he's making is sometimes you bite your tongue, but you don't pull your teeth out and you don't pull your tongue out. Friendships are made from disagreements. And the truth of the friendship is not how you act when everything is good, but it's how you act when you're mad at each other. I never forget I had a friend of mine who I was upset with and his mother passed away and we wasn't talking and I called him and I said I'm gonna be there for you I'm gonna be at the funeral everything you need anything you need for the funeral I'm there for you to support you and your mama your mother and her home going but I want you to know as soon as it's over I'm back not talking to you right now but he was my friend, see? <laughs> because a friendship is something that I hold dear because so many people don't keep their word. But I want to take it a little different and let me be a little exegetical in my approach. Is it possible to be too committed? Can you be so committed to something or someone that you end up missing your next season? Can you be so committed to something that God has to literally force you into another place because you are loyal to your last season? I believe this is exactly where this text bring us. There's a man here by the name of Elisha. You know Elisha. 
Elisha is the protege. He's the protege to the prophet of God, the man of God. What man of God? The man of God by the name of Elijah. Somebody shout Elijah. Elijah is the prophet of God. And though he's the prophet of God, Elisha is his student. But he's not any kind of student. A lot of students can be parasites. But he's not a parasite. He's a protege. He's not a student that's after his leader's pocket, but he's after his leader's heart. He's a student who has stood the test of time, a student who had made up in his mind that he will not be removed from his assignment. You know the story. God had raised up a prophet by the name of Elijah. You know Elijah, the one who showed up in the 17th chapter of the book of First Kings. From chapter 1 to chapter 16, we see nothing about a man named Elijah. You get to the 17th chapter, and it begins like this. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab this is what he said there shall be no do no rain these years but according to my word we don't know where he came from we don't know where he was he might have been in the backside of a desert he might have been in prayer might have been in intercession all we know is that when Elijah showed up Elijah was ready for his assignment stood before the king looked at the king and said it ain't gonna rain ain't even gonna be no do until I tell it to rain he said it's not going to happen until I tell it I don't know about you but I want to be the kind of person that when I talk God backs me up I want to be the kind of person that can look in the face of cancer and tell cancer to dry up and when I tell it to dry up it leaves the body I want to be the kind of person that can look at somebody and say silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus get up and walk I don't know about you but I don't want to just be a person who comes to church and have a good dance and have a good shout but I want to be somebody that heaven backs me up when I talk that I can send a word and demons tremble when I walk in a room look at your neighbor and say God backs me up when I talk be careful how you handle me. Be careful how you treat me. Be careful how you say things about me because I am the apple of God's eye. And if you mess with me, you're messing with God. I don't worry about people who want to talk about me and come up against me. I got a promise that says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thy envious against the evil workers of iniquity, for they are soon be cut off look at somebody say don't worry about your haters don't worry about those who are trying to kill you if God be fire wish I had a church in here who can be against me look at your neighbor again and say God backs me up Elijah comes on the scene but he comes on the scene walking in power you know the story Elijah comes on the scene and after he commands, hallelujah, that there would be no rain. God is so invested in Elijah that he sends a raven to feed him. Tells him to go to the brook called Cherith. For I've commanded a raven to feed you. You know the story. He leaves that brook and ends up going to see a widow in Zarephath. He goes to Zarephath and tells that woman to bake him a cake first. I don't have time to get into that, but if that was to happen in the 21st century, it would be all over the news. A preacher robs widow of her last meal. But I come to let you know that if you don't bless nobody, you got to learn how to bless the man of God. You're not talking back to me in here. I think it's Matthew 6 that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness everything else is going to be what you always take care of God's house I believe that's Haggai chapter 1 Haggai chapter 1 he said there's a reason that you got holes in your pocket he said the reason you got holes in your pocket is because you take care of your house and forget about my house. Look at somebody and say, take care of God's house. 
I want you to say that to somebody. I want you to say it with an attitude to them. Look at them and say, take care of God's house. I was raised up in the holiness church where they said, if you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. Look at them again and say, take care of God's house. When Elijah comes on the scene walking in power. Not only did he end up bringing provision to a widow woman's house, the Bible lets us know that one day that widow's son ends up dying. And it's Elijah who raises that widow's son from the dead. You know Elijah? Elijah was the prophet who had the showdown with the prophets of Baal. Remember, they start showing off and doing all of their stuff. But Elijah was so confident in his God that he said, I serve a God who's going to answer by fire. The Bible lets us know, hallelujah, that the prophets of Baal called on their God. They yelled on their God. And I believe Elijah began to mock them. He began to pick on them and say, where is your God? Is your God on vacation somewhere? Is your God sleep? But I'm glad I serve a God who never sleeps nor slumbers. Elijah said, this is what we're going to do. He said, I want you to what? the wood because I don't want you to think hallelujah that this happened because of gravity or because of force over friction he said but I want you to whack this wood up and Elijah called on the God that answers by fire and the power declares that fire came down and licked up the water and gave power unto the wood look at your neighbor and say I serve a God who answers when I call on him if you call on Jesus he'll answer prayer we used to sing a song that said operator give me long distance I need Jesus on the line y'all don't know what I'm talking about saints don't stop praying for the Lord is nigh don't stop praying he'll hear your cry there's power when you call on the name of Jesus I thank God for the holiness church that didn't mind on calling on the name of Jesus some of y'all got a Holy Ghost one way but I got it on the altar calling on the name of Jesus you know we got down there and said Jesus 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 we called him until every devil in us came out of I come to tell you if you got a problem if you got a situation Jesus is on the main line call him up and tell him what you want clap your hands if you serve a God who answers when you call it? Somebody shout hallelujah. It was the prophet Elijah who said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. It was Elijah who did that. This powerful prophet, this anointed prophet, just give me a couple of more minutes, I'm going to get out your way. This anointed prophet, this prophet of God was so anointed powerful it was great until he met this woman named Jezebel don't have time to get into Jezebel but you know we that was raised in Pentecost we was taught that Jezebel was red lipstick yes we was we was taught that Jezebel had on makeup but Jezebel is not a woman or a man. Jezebel is a spirit. It's a controlling spirit. Can I preach like I want to? It's a manipulative spirit. Y'all not talking back to me. Jezebel is tricky because Jezebel do not just, she's not bold with her control. She rules behind Ahab. Jezebel is tricky because the only reason Jezebel can do what she does is because she has a jellyback husband. Sisters, don't get mad at me. But a jellyback husband didn't have a backbone. You know his name. His name was Ahab. Jezebel declared 
that I'm going to kill all the prophets. Jezebel, that's, that, that, that's a sneaky spirit. You know, Jezebel is that person that wants to separate you from all your friends so they can get you to themselves, so they can manipulate you and influence you and tell you what to do. Look at somebody and say, get rid of Jezebel. Get. Jezebel is that spirit that gets upset when they're removed from a certain position in the church. Somebody say, that's Jezebel. Jezebel is that spirit that can't take rebuke, can't take correction. The minute somebody rebukes you, you're going to find you another church. You're going to join somewhere else because you can't tell. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I'm grown. That's your problem. God don't deal with grown folk. He only deal with children. He said, except you be converted as a little child. Look at somebody and tell your neighbor, you ain't all that. I know you're scared to tell them. I know somebody lied to them. Some of you are are on the verge of narcissism. I'm almost done because y'all get mad at me. But some of you are on the verge of narcissism and in your study of narcissism and how it is produced, they said that it can come from the over-affirmation of your parents. You know, they over-affirmed you. They made you feel like you're the prettiest person in the whole world. And I ain't nobody good enough for you. Somebody say, that's Jezebel. Jezebel must be here because it's quiet. And as a result of Jezebel coming at the prophet, Elijah, Elijah takes on this spirit, and it's a spirit of depression. He begins to sit under the willow tree, and he starts saying crazy stuff. He starts saying, Lord, I'm the only one left. There's nobody else but me. I, I, I'm the only person and I just want to pause one minute and, and let everybody know, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how great you preach, you can be replaced. You need to know that. You need to know that. You need to know that. You need to know. You might be a great singer. You might be great in ministry. You may be very powerful at what you are, but don't ever think you got no copyright on no position. And here was Elijah, thought he was the only one that God could use. And thought he was the only one, but God said, I want to let you know something, Elijah. Just need to give you a reality check. I got 7,000 other prophets that have not bowed unto Baal. Just because you don't see them don't mean you don't know your replacement. God always got somebody ready to do what you won't do. Look at somebody again and say, God will replace you you better know it God will replace you God will replace you well because he's sitting there under that juniper tree I'm sorry sitting there depressed and sad God tells him get up and as a matter of fact since you think you're the only one I'm going to go ahead and anoint you and tell you to go ahead and anoint your replacement. Isn't that what he told him here? He said, I want you to anoint two kings and I want you to anoint your replacement. And I, I just want to, just for the sake of argument, I, I want to suggest that Elijah didn't want to do it. Which is what I believe. And somebody say, well, why do you believe that? Because Everywhere in the scripture, especially under the old covenant, when somebody got anointed, they would use oil. And the two kings, he did anoint them with oil. But when he got ready to anoint his replacement, he never put oil on them. As a matter of fact, he grabbed his garment and just threw it on it. Yeah, he did that. He did that. He threw it and he left. I believe that 
he, he might have had an issue with it. Let me tell you why I think that just to give you a little, a little catch into my brain. Remember, John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And remember when it came time for John to make his transition. John started tripping. At first, when Jesus got in the water, he said, this is, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. That's what he said. Which taketh away the sins of the world. That's what he said. As a matter of fact, not only did he say that, he even said, I must decrease that he may increase. But John said something and something that John said caused him to end up in jail. And he thought for sure that Jesus was going to come back and get him out of jail. But Jesus didn't do it. Jesus kept on with his ministry. As a matter of fact, I want to let you know if you can catch this by revelation, that's the reason that John had to lose his head. Because two heads can't rule at one time. Head got cut off. His head was cut off and they come back to John and John said, see if he's the one. He got caught up in his feelings because Jesus didn't come look for him. He said, see if he's the one or shall we look for another? How would you ask that question? See if he's the one when you just got done saying, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Why would he say that? I believe he got caught up in his feelings and sometimes we don't know I'm going to get in trouble but sometimes we don't know how to transition into our replacement oh John's not the only one who had that problem Elijah's not the only one who had that problem Saul had that problem not only did he not want to transition to his replacement, he tried to kill his replacement. That's where we are. Elisha is the man on the scene now, and he's placed a garment on Elijah, and the Bible lets us know that Elisha said, let me go burn a yoke of oxen, let me do this, let me do that, and then I'm going to follow you. And even when his leader tried to walk away from him, when his leader tried to separate from him, Elijah said, I'm not leaving you because I am somebody shall commit it. The Bible lets us know that one day, because of his commitment, Elijah tried to leave him in Jordan, tried to leave him at Bethel. He said, just stay right here, stay right here, stay right here. But Elisha said, as the Lord liveth, I'm not going to let you out of my sight. Then he went somewhere else and tried to leave it there. And guess what? He said, just stay right here. Stay right here. But Elisha said, I'm not going to leave you. And because of his commitment, one day Elijah looked at Elisha and said, what can I do for you? He said, I don't want your house. I don't even want your car. I don't even want your anointing. I know we teach a double portion anointing, but that's not what the text says. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. I want your heart. I want to treat people like you treat people. Because if I get your spirit, I can get your anointing. He said, grant unto me a double portion of your spirit. And he responds and said, if you see me when I leave, the double portion 
is yours. The Bible lets us know that as a result of that double portion coming down, even though as soon as Elijah got ready to be taken, a chariot showed up. When that chariot showed up, Elisha was right there, but the mantle didn't fall on Elisha. The mantle fell on the ground, but guess what Elisha had to do? He had to Pick up the mantle. Look at somebody and say mantles are falling. Mantles are falling. Find another neighbor. Say mantles are falling. But you got to pick up that mantle. You got to be in place when that mantle falls so that you can pick up the mantle almost done. The Bible lets us know that as soon as that mantle falls, hallelujah, as soon as that mantle falls, Eliza strikes that mantle to the ground and said, where is the God of Elijah? And immediately Elisha begins to operate in miracles. He begins to see the same kind of miracles that Elijah saw even in the fourth chapter of the book of 2 Kings. Another woman had another issue because she had sons. They were getting ready to make her sons to be slaves but it was Elisha that got an instruction from the Lord and that instruction was fill all the water pots. He filled all the water pots. Oil came in those water pots and as a result of her obedience to the man of God oil filled the water pots. I'm almost there and as a result of that as a result of Elisha's commitment, as a result of his dedication, as a result of his submission, you're not anointed until you submit. You're not ready for the next level until you submit. You're not ready for ministry until you can take a rebuke, until you can be told to sit down and you don't catch an attitude. Y'all quiet in here. You're not ready for ministry until I can tell you to sit down. You're spirit ain't right and you can take it and don't get mad and don't leave the church Elijah was anointed but Elisha was dedicated he was committed to him he was committed he was committed he was committed he had taken on a servant spirit and sometimes when you are committed and you are a servant and you are a great servant and you are good at serving you can become so good at serving that you don't know how to make the transition into a leader because you've been serving so much and you've been humble so much and you've been served so much that you don't know how to make the transition into leadership. I'm glad I said that because it brings me to my text the sixth chapter of the book of second kings. Here it is these sons of the prophet. It is not the prophet but these are sons of the prophets. This is a company of prophets. They are not mature prophets, but they are prophets in training. But because Elisha was so humble and because Elisha was so committed, sometimes because you are humble and you are small in your own eyes, it takes people, somebody else to come and tell you how big you are. Sometimes it takes people in your circle to come and tell you the place you in you've been in long enough that's exactly what happened in the 6th chapter of 2nd Kings Elijah had got so comfortable where he was that he even began to shrink in small spaces he had gotten so comfortable where he was uh, that he didn't know how to transition to the next level. He had gotten so comfortable where he was. Uh, he had became a master, watch this, a master at maintaining. But he didn't know how to transition and grow. And sometimes we are afraid to grow because we're afraid that if God ever blesses us, we'll get lifted up in pride. If God ever blesses us, I want to stay humble. I want to stay small. I heard a bishop say that he talked about Fred Casey Price years ago and said, I'll never pastor a church. I'll never be a member of a church where the pastor can't shake my hand. Talked about Fred Casey Price and said, I can't believe 
believe people go to a church with a pastor who hand they can't shake until that same pastor went from 30 people to 30,000 people there are a lot of things you say when you're on one level but it takes you being exposed to another level for you to change the way you see things and change the way you think I've been sent from God to come and announce to you and even to this house that God is ready to take you to another level I need you to shake your neighbor and shake that neighbor like you're trying to shake the devil up off of him and say it's time to go to another level the level you've been on is comfortable the level you've been on feels good the level you've been on you've got comfortable there but the spirit of God is telling me to tell you today that it's time to go to another level grab I think I'm ready to preach now grab yes sir grab your neighbor and say it's time to go to another level you ain't got the right neighbor yet you got you a neighbor that's comfortable where they are just organ you got you a neighbor that don't know how to make the transition you got you a neighbor that's afraid to say what God said but I need you to find you a neighbor and say neighbor whatever you do it's time to go to another level grab you another neighbor and say it's time to go to another place because the place you've been in that place is too small the dimension you've been in that place is too small the house you're living in that house is too small the car you're driving that car is too small there's a greater place there's a greater dimension there's a greater realm that God's getting ready to take you to that's why your friends can't handle you where you are that's why your friends are starting to agitate you that's why the people around you are starting to get on your nerve because there's another place grab your neighbor and say neighbor there's another place say neighbor there's another dimension you're too big for this the place you're in right now there is a greater dimension okay the place you're in right now there is a greater place get on the keyboard look at somebody next to you and say get ready for your next level you got the wrong neighbor I said find you another neighbor and say neighbor get ready for your next level tell your neighbor where you are is a little too small who you've been hanging with is a little too small the people you around is a little too small and if you stay there you're gonna find yourself trying to fit in with people that are not ready for your next level but grab your neighbor rock them and shake them shake them and rock them you ain't rock nobody i said rock them and shake them shake them and rock them and say neighbor god told me to tell you it's time to come up higher your dedication higher in your consecration higher in your finances higher in your business it's too small grab you another neighbor and say it's too small I came to this church to prophesy to everybody under the sound of my voice to let you know you've been in that place long enough too long you've been looking down on yourself too long you've been hanging with people that can't handle what God's getting ready to take you too long you've been dealing with people with a small mind but God's getting ready to change your circle God's getting ready to change your friend for I heard him tell Abraham 
leave your country leave your family leave everybody unto a land that I'm gonna show you grab your neighbor and say neighbor it's time to pack your bags it's time to make a move you've been committed to a low season you've been committed to a dead relationship you've been committed to a dead covenant you've been committed to a dead friend i heard the holy ghost say it's time to move it's time to change your friends it's time to change your association i got to close but i feel like my bishop shall glory shall glory another time grab your neighbor and say neighbor it's time to make a move zion is calling you higher zion is calling you to another place leave your friends leave everybody behind you that's not ready for the next level and say i'm going to another place i'm moving on up to the east side in a deluxe apartment somebody shout yeah shout yeah yeah close but find you a neighbor for the last time and say neighbor I got a word from the Lord you ain't said nothing yet I said grab you a neighbor I said grab you a neighbor and say neighbor I got a word from the Lord I got an assignment from the Lord God called me to this church to pull you out of where you've been how long will you mourn over Saul sin I have rejected him how long are you gonna be committed to a low place grab your neighbor grab your neighbor and say neighbor I have an assignment to pull you out when I count to three you're gonna pull your neighbor out of the low place pull your neighbor out of the bad place pull your neighbor out of poverty pull your neighbor out of sickness pull your neighbor out of infirmity when I count to three you're gonna pull them one two three pull them out is going higher somebody is being pulled it's too small say yeah. say yeah. get out your seat run the five people and say it's time to move it's time to move It's time to move. You got the wrong neighbor. Tell somebody else it's time to move. The place you in is too small. The level you're thinking is too small. You're too big to be dealing with people who are on the same level. God, hey, he, he's called you to greater there's a greater anointing there's a greater assignment you can't stay there it's time to go to another level it's time to come out of where you at somebody scream if you're ready for the next level Shout glory, shout glory, a 
another time look at your neighbor and say come out of there come out of there there's some things that's been on your heart you ain't told nobody about some things you've been dealing with in the night time but God told me to tell you keep your heart right don't let people get under your skin keep your heart right keep your spirit right he's getting ready to blow your mind beyond your imagination for I heard the Bible say eyes have not seen ears have not heard your patience your commitment is about to pay off be still be planted don't let nothing uproot you be still there's a blessing in your commitment say yes say yes say yes i wish i had a praise grab somebody and say get ready for your next level get ready for your next level i don't know who i came to preach to but god told me that tonight is an announcement it's an announcement to tell you look at your neighbor and say neighbor you're too big for slow people you're too big to deal with him you're too big to deal with her go higher he's calling you higher scream if you're ready to go higher I said, neighbor. I said, talk to your neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Neighbor, I want you to pray for me. Because every time I try to go up, down with cravings, down with appetites, down with passion, keep kind of calling back to a low place. But the devil is a liar. Going higher, I'm getting ready to drop everything, drop everybody, drop anything that's hindering me from going higher. I cut you off, I cut the cord, I cut the umbilical cord, and I come to tell you it's time to go higher, it's time to get what he said. Scream if you're ready. season it took him being around somebody who could see in him what he couldn't see in himself I, I, I am a son of this house but I speak as a prophet to these people and I come to tell you that there is such another place that God wants to 
shoot us to. But you have to be willing to come out of your comfort zone. I'll give you this example. Elvis was a good singer, I guess. And Elvis was on the Chitlin circuit. He was doing good. But a man saw Elvis by the name of Colonel Tom Parker. Nothing about Elvis had to change. But he told Elvis certain things that he had to do so that he would not just be a good singer or a great performer, but he would be the greatest in the world. So there were people around him who he loved, who he was loyal to, dedicated to, committed to. But he didn't recognize that they were not as committed to him as he thought, as much as they were committed to the check. Because the minute he no longer paid them, they left them. God was taking me places. I knew he had called me to greatness. But I'm loyal. I'm loyal to my detriment. And you need people in your life that can help you make the shift. So God exposed me to this lady who came from the Hearst family. I'm Southern. I'm a church boy. I eat what I want to eat. Like I, I didn't know no manners. I didn't know where to put no napkin. I didn't know what fork to eat with. I didn't know nothing about that. I just know you pick up the fork and eat. But she pulled me aside and said, you, you, you're going to be known all over the world and you're going to sit at certain tables. So I'm going to teach you how to act for your next season. Let, let me make it a little biblical. Remember David in the Bible? Remember him? You remember David? Not your cousin. I'm talking about David in the Bible. Remember David was called to be king? That's what his call was. But David didn't know how to be king. All David know how to do was take care of what? She. So guess who God connected David with? Jonathan. Jonathan is not the king, but he's the son of a king. David has the anointing, but Jonathan had the etiquette. Just because you anointed, don't mean you know how to act in your next season. So God connected him to Jonathan. And guess what Jonathan said? Don't do this. Don't do that. When you go to the king's house, this is what you wear. This is what you do. I was sent here from God to tell you, this house, every person in here, that Zion is calling you to a higher place. But don't, for the sake of people, start shrinking into places that you know is too small. All because you don't want to offend people who was only supposed to be a part of your last season. Can I give you another word? Everybody is not a part of your destination. Some people are just transportation to your destination. Would you look at your neighbor and say, you're too big for this. You still fighting? You still cussing? You still acting crazy? There are places God want to take you to but he can't take you because you're still acting like your old season. I want to expose you to greater, but I can't 
Could you see it like it like you in the project somewhere? And God said, I can't take you where I want to take you. You're too big for this. Look at somebody and tell them, you're too big for this. You are obviously sitting next to somebody who goes to the Church of Latter-day Saints. Find somebody that's a little prophetic and tell them, God said, you're too big for this. You're too big to still be getting offended. You're too big for me to have to coddle your emotions. You're too big for me to still have to babysit you. One thing I learned is whatever you babysit won't grow. Stop babysitting people. Stop babysitting adults and command them to move to another place. It's a new season. Sing it, y'all. Fresh anointing. Everyone standing. Come on. Season of power. I can't hear you. Come on. And prosperity. It's a new season. Come on. Everybody lift your voice and say, It's a new. It's a new day. Tell your neighbor, fresh and all. It's a new season. Come on, come in to everybody. Say it again. Come on. It's a new season. It's a new. I can't hear y'all. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. Coming my way. Season of power, it's a season of and prosperity. Hey, hey, you in the black and white, you're gonna be called into a room. You're gonna be called into a room with people of influence. It's a boardroom, but it has something to do specifically with finance. You're going to be called into a room and favor is going to be given to you in this space. Hear me back? I'm telling you what I know. You're going to be called into a room and the education that you need for this next season, he's going to have them to pay for it. But you're going to be called into a room. Pacific, I'm talking about a boardroom. I see a boardroom and I see you called into this room, but it's going to have something to do with finance, corporate America. You're going to be called into that room and everything that you need it's, it's, on, it's going to blow your mind the favor that, that God gave you. I saw about three years ago you were working on something but something happened and kind of moved it out the way. But God said I'm going to give you a do-over. It's like another chance is coming and you're not going to be working for nobody. He's setting you up and establishing you and all the contracts that you need for your business is coming right in your hands and this is your season of favor somebody clap those hands and give god the praise everybody say it's a new season it's a new it's a new day now there are november and december are two more months and this is the year of the crossroad. Look down your row and say, you gotta make a decision. Get that Presbyterian from by you. Find somebody and say, you gotta make a decision. You gotta make a decision.
decision this year that you're not going to be in the place you are. Everything has to change this year. Tell somebody everything. Wrong neighbor, find somebody. Say everything. Got to change this year. I counted it up and I want you to do it. I just left. I just left Atlanta, a bishop church. They told him he had chronic heart failure. He came to see me in Mobile, Alabama. They told him he had chronic heart failure. He said, Prophet Khan, I got to leave because I got to go get my heart medicine. I said, stay. He said, I hear you talking, but I got to go get my heart medicine. I got a chronic heart failure. I said, stay. He said, yes, I'm going to stay. I grabbed him and slapped him in the chest and said, God's given you a new heart. He just testified this morning that he went to the doctor and they say, we don't know what you did, but God gave you a brand new heart. Look at somebody say, just like that. church a couple of weeks ago had a charge against him for attempted murder and was guilty oh yes he was guilty when they come to me that's the first thing I ask them, are, you, are you guilty or not and the spirit of God got on me and I pointed at him and went and grabbed him and said you won't spend a day in jail Because a man of God has the power to change your situation. And he came to testify three weeks ago that he was supposed to be doing over 30 years in jail. But by the word of a prophet, he didn't spend one day in jail. Slap somebody and say, that's the kind of God we serve. I'm learning how to preach. But if I tell you a TV is in your backyard and you go home and the TV not there, call the police because somebody stole your TV. If I tell you something, you can put your life up. You're going to be approved for some property. If I tell you something, you can put your life on it. He finna be approved for that property. It's a property he been believing God for. He just got approved for it. Now y'all shout for him. Y'all act like y'all scared. I dare go. Uh oh. Yeah. say he's a money preacher they're telling the truth because I'm sick of you shouting and ain't got no money say amen look down your road and tell your neighbor you know you want some money anybody tell you money don't make you feel good is somebody ain't had enough of it 
Because money make you feel good. Don't it make you feel good? I tell this all the time, one of the mothers at the church, I told her, to, I got ready to pick up. I said, come on, mother. She said, I don't feel like it today. I'm just going to stay in. I said, come on, mother. I'm going to take you somewhere. No, I'm just going to stay in today and feeling my best. I said, well, mother, I'm trying to get you because I'm going to take you shopping. She said, I can throw my wig on real quick. There are 63 days left this year, and I want us to do this quickly. I don't want you to hesitate. Your giving is too small for this level. It's time to give on another level. I remember the Lord challenged me to sow my first seed of a thousand. I remember the Lord told me to challenge my first seed of ten thousand. I remember the Lord challenged me to sow my first seed of fifty thousand. Then I was sitting at a service in New York and the Lord told me to give the lady in the church a hundred thousand dollars. And I said, I know the voice of God, but this sounds like a lying spirit. But I obeyed God and that one seed changed my life. I want to challenge everybody because we're going to sanctify the next two months of this year. And I'm going to speak and decree over your life that your last two months be greater than your first ten months. Look down your road. Say, I received that. challenge everybody there's 63 days left this year and I want to challenge everybody somebody shout everybody come on tell it to that person with that little spirit on them say you too you too you too I want everybody whether you give them by cash app credit card give them the fire uh, uh, good checks not rubber checks good checks I want everybody everybody that has $63 to your name I want you to get in on this I want every one of you to get that seed and meet me up here at the front of this church quickly I don't care if you're giving on cash app on your phone however you're doing get that seed and run up here quickly quickly I want 10 of you to give 163 I want 10 of you to give 163 but I want everyone who's given that $63 seed to come on 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 get up here come up as close as you can come up close 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 Everybody is giving that $63. See, 10 of you is giving 163. I know you're here. And I just want you to do that. I want you to do that. One person, the, the, I believe 163 is too small for you. One person may give 1,063. I just dare you. Dare you to put your faith out there and watch God. But everybody who's giving that seat, come on up close. I don't bite. Come on up. Come on up. If they're giving by card, what they do, Bishop? If you give them by card, do that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look down your row and tell everybody around you the place you're in is too small. The rest of you in this room, the rest of you in this room, if you don't have 63, that's fine, but I want you to get in on this. If it's 53, 43, 33, 23, 13, 3, don't matter. But I want you to get whatever you have and come up here as quick as you can. Hurry up and don't hesitate. Come, come, come. 
I say this by the spirit of grace. God's calling you to another place. Hold that seat up high there. Thank you, Lord. Look at the person on your left and your right and tell them you will always have money. God gonna bless you because you kept your heart right enemy tried to get you offended but you kept your heart right God gonna honor you God gonna honor you God's gonna honor you God is faithful I need you Lord I need you Lord right now I need you Lord tell it I need you Lord right now say I lift my hands bow my knees I worship I worship at your throne I need you Lord I need you Lord I need you, Lord, right now. Lift that seat up high, high, high. I want you to, you might can't sing, but I want you to use your voice. Look at your neighbor and say, it won't always. Finish it, y'all. Be like. Wait, they didn't get it. 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 So find you another neighbor. Can find you another neighbor. Say, don't play with me. I'm serious. Look at him. Say, neighbor. Say, it won't always. Finish it. Be like. Ba 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 sha. Kalabasitolobo. Tell one more person, it won't always finish it. Be loved. Now look at one more person say, the Lord will perfect that. Finish it. Concern me. Somebody trying to figure out when it's going to happen. But look at somebody say, I don't know when, but I do know this. Tell them what you know. Sooner or later. I'm going to say that till it get in your spirit. Look at somebody else say, I know it's going to happen. When is it gonna happen? Come on, sing it, y'all. Come on. Sooner or later. When is it gonna happen? Come on. Sooner or later. Excuse me. It, it, I need you to listen. Your words have power. So I need you to be prophetic right now. And I need you to look at that person and tell them sooner or later. Come on, say it. Sooner or later, come on. Sooner or later. When my son gonna get saved? family gonna get the Holy Ghost. Come on. Soon when I'm gonna get approved for that property. Come on. Soon Where you live? 
Champaign, Illinois, you're not from here. You drove to be here tonight. I don't know you. We never spoke before, have we? I ain't never spoke to you. Tell me, because I know you. I don't know I know you. So tell me. Do I know you? Oh, okay. Why you have to think about it? I don't know you, do I? Oh, okay. You thought I knew you or something? Oh, okay. I want to bring my memory back. Praise God. Lift your hands. God ain't forgot you. He, 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 he going to your house. He breaking every stronghold of addiction. He's going to set you free. Not just you, but he going to deliver. Look like I heard him say, the whole Williams family. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. I feel something creeping up on me. Sooner or later, come on. Sooner or later. I'm telling you, deliverance is coming to your family. I want to declare, hello, shy. I want to deliver, oh, Kian Kala Messiah. I'm an Anamandala Bohotai. Hello, Bahashaya. I want to deliver, oh, Sia. I want to declare. This is the year that everything has to turn in your favor. You got blue, you got blue, green, you know, hair. Lift your hands. You're going back to school and you're going to finish. The Spirit of God wants you to know that everything your mama didn't accomplish and the things she was not able to do, you're gonna finish that course. I'm praying for you because there's a prayer warrior in you and there's an intercessor in you, but the enemy wants you to get so distracted with the world's stuff that you don't be who he's called you to be. So I'm declaring over your life this year that God shall wake you up at five, six in the morning and he shall begin to deal with you there's also a healing taking place in your body, in the lower part of your stomach. Those bad pains that you have every month, you're not going to have them anymore. God said you heal. The reason it's been hurting so bad is you got two cysts that sit on your ovary, but you won't have that no more. You heal sooner or later. Sooner or later. Look at somebody and say, what's going to happen sooner or later? Find somebody else. Say, what's going to happen sooner or later? Ask somebody else, what's going to happen sooner or later? It's going to turn in your favor. Say it, come on. Turn in your favor. Won't you say this with confidence? Let's turn it around for you. Won't you say it? And when you say it, believe this. I'm telling you, God is adding years to your life. You hear me? You will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. God's going to put a yes in your belly and a surrender in your spirit. over your neighbor. I gotta go. I'm sorry for holding y'all so long. You're getting ready to make a declaration over your neighbor and whatever you speak over them, you're gonna reap what you sow. Look at somebody and say, I mean what I say. Everything you, lift your hands, have done in secret, he gonna reward you openly. I'm looking at this older woman did to your heart. And the Spirit of God said because you honored her, 
He's going to honor you all the days of your life. Don't worry about this little, seemingly little dry spell. Don't worry about it. Remain faithful. Keep sowing. Keep giving. Keep being committed. Nothing you do, God say, goes unnoticed. Your prayers and your arms have come up as a memorial before God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take my fist, come here, and I'm going to put it in your chest. And God's giving you a new heart. He's strengthening your body. And he told me to tell you, the money that you lost in that investment because you trusted somebody, He's going to give you double for your trouble. God said the contract is yours. Scream. Hey. Now shout for your next level. What? Y'all ready? ready to tell your neighbor it's turning around for you you ready you're gonna sing it to him though but when you say it say it with some oil on it all right are you ready are you ready are you ready go home pack your bags go home pack your bags just pack you up some little stuff and put it in that closet in your house as soon as you walk in the front door there's a door right there put that stuff that you got packed up and put it in a closet then I want you to start looking for an architect and I want you to design that house the way you want it God told me to tell you I'm going to grant unto you the desires of your heart. And even that issue going on with your family, where the enemy is trying to bring division, God say today, I'm shifting this thing. They're not going to fight you. They're going to give you what's yours. I come against that thing between you and family and sisters. Somebody scream, it's turning right now. Hey! Feel deliverance coming in. Wait. Y'all ready? Now, when you say this, if you believe it, you're gonna walk out of here knowing that everything is turning for you right now. Look at somebody and say, I'm about to speak a word over your life. Hold that seat up high. <laughs> I said, tell somebody I'm about to speak a word over your life. You ready? Hold up, Baba, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold up, Shadia. Hold up, Andele, Kola, la la Sai. Hold up, Shande. Come here. Come here. You. Come here. I want you to take your hand and put it right here. Now listen to me. You're going to live a long time. God told me to tell you whatever women dealt with in your family it's not going to come now your dwelling he told me to tell you you ain't never got to worry about cancer uh -huh. oh, somebody scream in here hey. never 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 somebody shout never never oh. what Word of Lord. I mean that. Never got to worry about cancer. You ready? You're going to say, turn it around for you. When you say it, I want you to sing it to him with confidence. And when you say this thing, you're going to say it like you know God has done what he said he's going to do. One more time. Say, sooner or later. Come on. Sooner or later, it's going to turn it. Now prophesy, tell them it's turning, it's turning up. Yeah, hey, tell somebody it's turning, it's 
One more time. Say it with everything you got. Come on. It's turning around. Now scream if you know it's turning. It's turning. It's turning. Hold on, shout it out. It's turning. It's turning. It's turning. It's turning. It's turning. I said it's turning. I said it's turning. Hold. I said it's turning. Grab three people and say it's turning. It's turning. It's turning. 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 Hey, it's turning. It's turning. I said it's turning. I said it's turning. I wish I had somebody that knew how to participate with your declaration. To squeeze somebody and say it's turning, it's turning, it's turning. Oh, it's turning. Hey, it's turning. It's turning. It's turning. You're going to bring your seed, even if you're giving my card, even if you give it on Cash App, you're going to bring that seed, and you're just going to touch this altar. And you're going to go back after you touch the altar. Mashara. Hotabasia. After you touch the altar, after you touch the altar, you're going to turn around one time. And I believe the Holy Ghost is going to meet you in the turn. I said you're going to bring that seed, touch the altar, turn around one time, and go back to your seat. Hey, come on, hey. I heard 
heard something. If there's anyone in here that has a family member who is bound by a strong addiction, strong addiction, strong addiction, when I tell you to, I don't care if it's your brother, your sister, your wife, your mama, your dad, strong addiction. I want you to get in the aisle. And when I tell you, I want you to turn around one time and dance like you done lost your mind. Because deliverance is coming right now. One, two, three. Hey. 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 Something is shifting. Something is turning. You better die. 
Let's go, please. Go ahead and play. Go ahead and play. room we are. Let's thank God for the word, for the messenger, for the prophecy. Let's thank God for that soul the Lord filled with the Holy Ghost. What a time we have had this entire weekend. We give God the glory and the praise and the honor. Thank you for your patience. We're not going to be full of you with much talk. We want to leave out on the cusp of this anointing. I do want to thank God for Lady Rosetta Warfield who's been worshiping with us this weekend. We just want you to know we appreciate you. Being in this house all the way from Kansas City, Missouri, thank you. How did, how did I get you in Kansas City? Your brothers, that's right, but thank you. We appreciate your presence. Just tell everybody again tonight, I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad the Lord is here. As we leave this room, it has been so stupendous and so outstanding. I hope he doesn't mind me imposing upon him tonight, but I think a, a fit ending for this service, if Sister Vivian Elder Morgan has another mic, but he can, he can use mine, that's all right. That's all right, come on. I think we need a Father's blessing. How many would like that? Pray over us. Pray over us as we leave this service tonight. Now some of y'all, I'm gonna throw one little jab. You done found out it's all right to be in the sanctuary. Now, right now I'm talking about the physical house. How many know it's all right to be here? Amen, I ain't saying nothing else. Bishop, pray for us tonight, whatever word the Lord gives you to speak over us. Father, we thank you. It's with thanksgiving in our hearts. The divine exuberance of the power of the Holy Ghost that is upon your people. Thank you for the preacher, the prophet, who's given a direct word from you. We thank you for all that are here, those who made the sacrifice, those who stayed, 
Let the abundant blessings of God be upon them. In the name of Jesus. Cancel every assignment of the enemy. Haya. In the name of Jesus. As we go down from this place. We thank you Lord for your word. The word of God that cannot err. That cannot lie. You said it. We believe it. And it's done. And because it's done Lord. We give you praise. Before we leave here tonight. On our way out the door. As we go in our cars and whatever, God, let your protection be around about your people and cancel every assignment of the enemy. Cover us with your blood. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's love on one another. Amen. God bless everyone in the East Sanctuary. We love you tonight. Glad you were part of this service. You in the room, love on each other as you go out the door. East Sanctuary members. Put some love in that chat line. We want our guest pastors, our guest pastors, um, let me see. Uh, guest pastors, Elder Porter, lead them over to the place of repast, please. If they're able, just take them over. You can lead them now.